Okay, let's go to the questions 9 through 15. Question 9, and this one's one of my favorite. It really drives the evolutionists crazy because this truly proves that macroevolution's got a problem. It is not true. Why are the expected countless millions of transitional fossils missing? And you should really ask your evolutionist believing friends this, and it really gets them to stutter and stammer and stumble and fumble. The evolution says, well, they aren't missing. Every fossil ever found is a link between older and newer forms. But our rebuttal to this is, look, this is assumed, not demonstrated. It is also patently absurd, as numerically the majority of fossils fit neatly into previously described species. It also obfuscates the real problem. Even on a species-by-species -species basis, transitional forms are the exception to the rule. There are only a handful of fossils claimed to be transitional between major groups of life. This was recognized by Darwin himself as a huge problem for his theory. And this handful of disputed fossils is different from the disputed handful of the past. And then they give some examples. Another uh, question that really drives uh, the evolutionist crazy is, number 10, how did living fossils remain unchanged over supposed hundreds of millions of years if evolution has changed worms into humans in the same time frame? Answer one from the evolutionist, when creatures find no need to adapt to changing circumstances, they don't change. Well, our rebuttal to this is this. So evolution explains if creatures don't change, and it explains if they do. How convenient. But surely mutation would work at the same rate in the populations that had unchanging environments, and if eight mutations per year were being fixed in the population as argued in the above answer, this would mean that most, if not all species, would be subject to radical change over time. How could these species not change in light of the species evolving around them? some of which, including bacteria, would be trying to make a meal out of the species in stasis. Now, question 11. How did blind chemistry create mind, intelligence, meaning, altruism, and morality? The evolutionists say, well, morality and the meaning of life is a philosophical question and irrelevant to the theory of evolution. Now, our rebuttal as creationists is this. Of course it's a question for evolution. Evolution is all about how we got from the first life to the life we have today. And humans today have mind, intelligence, meaning, altruism, and morality. You assume, as evolutionists, that evolution only has to answer scientific questions. But evolution is as much about philosophy as science. There are branches of evolutionary science called sociobiology, human behavioral ecology, and evolutionary psychology, which attempt to explain human society, love, morals, religion, altruism, etc., purely in evolutionary terms. But if you're really serious, then you better tell many of your fellow evolutionists who pontificate about religion and morals. Question 12. Why is evolutionary just so storytelling tolerated. In other words, you know how evolutionists just say, well, this is just the way it is. Why is it just so, they're just so storytelling tolerated? The answer that evolutionists give is because evolution's just so stories are based on facts, but our response as creationists is, look, does the critic realize that question was based on a review by evolutionist Richard Lewinton who referred to the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just-so stories. That's the whole point. If they were based on fact, then they wouldn't be just-so stories as Lewinton admitted existed. Question 13. Where are the scientific breakthroughs due to evolution? The evolutionists say, evolution is an extraordinary breakthrough in its own right. But the creationist response is, but other things that are extraordinary scientific breakthroughs in their own right lead to other breakthroughs. Question 14. Science involves experimenting to figure out how things work, how they operate. Why is evolution a theory about history taught as if it is the same as this operational science? The evolutionist response, 
There have been plenty of experiments that demonstrate evolution, one of the most famous being Linsky's experiment. The creationist response to the evolutionist. What experiments demonstrate that a universal common ancestor changed into all the living things on Earth? None. This is a belief about history, and no experiments can be done on such an imagined history. You are referring to experiments that demonstrate mutations, adaptation, etc. in today's world. Creationist biologists have no argument with these, except when they are held up as evidence of evolution, which they are not, because these observable variations in living things cannot be extrapolated to explain the origin of these living things. Question 15. Why is a fundamentally religious idea, a dogmatic belief system that fails to explain the evidence, taught in science classes? The evolutionists respond, evolution can explain the evidence. Creationists such as CMI simply refuse to recognize this. Our rebuttal is, look, one of the previous answers asked was, what was wrong with just so stories which really don't explain anything also many evolutionists including our critics explain certain things by mutations and natural selection which are also parts of the creation model so are powerless to choose between them likewise common features are a prediction both from common ancestry and common design but some of them thwart evolutionary explanations so favor the latter. So the evolutionist says evolution has no doctrines or dogma, no rituals, traditions, or holidays. It has no leaders or defenders of the faith because it does not allow faith. Evolution is not a religion, and it's deceptive of creationists to claim that it is. But our response as creationists is this. Yet this charge of deception would thus need to be applied to the evolutionary philosopher of science, Michael Roos. Michael Roos said, evolution is promoted by its practitioners as more than mere science. Evolution is promulgated as an ideology, a secular religion, a full-fledged alternative to Christianity with meaning and morality. Michael Roos goes on to say that he's an ardent evolutionist and an ex-Christian, but even he says, but I must admit that in this one complaint, and Mr. Gish is but one of many to make it, the literalists are absolutely right. Evolution is a religion. Michael Roos says this was true of evolution in the beginning, and it is true of evolution today. Thunderfoot, please answer these 15 questions. Support your religion of evolution and answer these 15 questions. Will Thunderfoot answer these 15 questions in a video or will he remain weak sauce like Matt Dillahunty said he was? Check out the video below this video to see where Matt Dillahunty talks about Thunderfoot being weak sauce. And thanks for watching.